Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today, today we're taking a look at another keyboard from Akko in the MU series. We took a look at the MU01, which is a very nice 3-mode 65% wooden keyboard. And here we have the MU02, which is a 75% knobbed wooden case keyboard. So very interesting. It's very nice looking as but I really enjoyed the MU01. I thought it was a well built, it sounded really nice and looked really nice. Um, especially the wood, everything about it was just well done in my opinion. So I've got high expectations for this one, but without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it and let's see what we got. So before taking a look at the keyboard, let's see what we find in the box. Looks like we've got a quick little user guide that comes in two languages. We have an Akko QAQC card in the accessories box. We have a rubberized USB-A to USB-C cable, an IC style switch pour, a wire keycap pour along with five extra rosewood switches. I Previously reviewed the Rosewood switch. I actually quite like it. It's one of the foggiest switches definitely come, that's come out of Anko. We have a branded 2.4 USB dongle. And we have a microfiber cloth and some wax. So that we can keep the wood in nice shape. Uh, basically, I would say, depending on your usage, any, anywhere from every three to six months. Basically, just clean it off. Rub a little wax on it. Rub it in and then rub it off. <laughs> That's the way that I was taught to take care of wood anyway. But I do believe they might have instructions on the website about it. And here we are with the Akko MU02 wooden 75%. We've got an exploded 75% layout with the arrows broken off. We've got the 1U modifiers on the right of the space bar as well as a four key navigation column, a knob, and a delete or F13 key. Thankfully, Aku is one of the companies that tends to more often than not include a dust cover for the keyboard, which is a plus in my opinion. Now we can see with this one, we have a very interesting design, whereas on the top we had I believe was a bronze, but it could have been a copper like liner. And I believe that's the way to open it. I still haven't had a chance to get to it to open it. This one has what looks like, if I had to guess, like a brass, like a light brass plate. Um, actually in the light, it almost looks like rose pink, but I think that's just a trick of the light, in my opinion. Um, the wood on it is a very clean and smooth walnut like finish and it's even got the uh, uh i was gonna say that's just on a sticker there all right i believe these have to come off to open it if i'm not mistaken i haven't done the mu01 yet either and we do have an aluminum knob it is a d knob so a six millimeter d should work in replacement has a nice satisfying click with those rosewood switches it's a very nice and deep tone i believe if i'm not mistaken the other one had pianos on them which are nice switches but they were of a higher pitch this is taking advantage of the wood and metal design and really just leaning into it with the rose wood. Huh. Maybe that is a rose gold. I don't know. Do my eyes deceive me or is it just bronzes or light bronze? I guess I can't tell colors well anymore. <laughs> it does seem to have that same, I think it's an MOA or MDA keycap profile. Um, they're obviously die sub. It is, again, like I said on the other one, it's, it's like a work of art. It's, um, it's not only nice to use, but it's 
quite lovely to look at, in my opinion. I'm just guessing at this point. Yeah, there we are. So there's our wireless switch. If you want to go ahead and turn it on, you can see the RGB. It is a south facing. It does have an FR4 plate. Let's take a look at the stabilizers. There's a rosewood switch. I'll do my best to remember to link it down below. Um, my review to the, of them, which I think they're just a really nice, deeper switch. One of the deeper switches from Akko, because Akko has been known for more clacky, but they've been coming out with some really nice switches. I think they're first clicky, actually. They finally came out with their first, what I think is their first clicky. Uh, but it looks like we have plate mounted stabilizers. We have a south facing PCB. And it does look like we have the hi fi layers on here with the PET over the PCB and the IPXE on top of that. The stabilizers are well lubricated on the inside of the stem. And they also have some lubrication. Yeah. See it probably a little bit more than some um, on the elbows there where there's going to be more of contact. When I come back to them, I'll clean them off. But I do believe it was the same on the MU01. We do have the ability to install screw and stabilizers. So that's always a consideration. So we've got the rosewood switches, which are opaque, but they still do allow for RGB to come through um, enough to highlight at least uh, the borders of the keys. Um, if that wasn't an FR4 plate and we were dealing with a PC plate, I would say it probably would diffuse a little bit better, but I could see where the FR4 kind of works better with the wood, in my opinion. Definitely sounds real nice right out of the box. Again, it's one of those keyboards, as I said, with the MU01, that's just, I think the majority of people are going to be like, yep, that's perfect. Let's go. Got some of the standard key mappings for going through the light effects. It has a lovely keycap profile along with the keycap artwork makes the keyboard in my opinion almost like a work of art in and of itself um i love the uh the metallic like i said i don't know if it's a it's probably aluminum in a different finish but and maybe it's just my light even though it's more white than anything else it's not really yellow i see more of a very light rose gold but I should probably ask my wife i know she would know she would know if that's a rose gold or not. Just the specs. They were taking a look at the Akko MU02, a three mode wooden 75% with a knob. It is built with a gasket mounted FR4 plate, a selection of Akko Rosewood or Piano Pro switches. It is also loaded with MOA profile die sub PVT keycaps in the mountain seclusion colorway. It is preloaded with a 4,000 milliamp hour capacity battery and comes weighing in at 1,125 grams. Each end of this keyboard sits at 25.5 millimeters off the typing surface while the back sits 36.8 millimeters off the typing surface providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. The MSRP of this keyboard starts at $135.79, links below. So we definitely have a very interesting and honestly, I would say unique. I mean, the layout isn't, but the mix of materials. And one thing that I actually, I went to my wife and asked her, I'm like, is this like a aluminum or is this like a pink or a rose gold? And she looked at it and she was like, no, that's rose gold. 
And she's like, wait. And she walked out of my office where I have white light and walked into another room that has yellow light. And then it looked aluminum. It's like, wait a minute, what? It's like that dress, that internet dress that was a white or blue, depending on what light it was under. Basically, I mean, I know that different materials refract different light waves. So that's how we see color. But it's, I just found it interesting because both of them look fine. If it's an aluminum, then the brown kind of gives it more of a almost copperish, though it's still aluminum. But in the yellow light, it looks like rose gold. And I've never been one that's crazy about rose gold, but here it just, it works with the browns, with the, uh, the light tans, um, and the whole just art vibe of this keyboard. I, I continue to see Akko just releasing some very nice keyboards and creative. It's not like they're just like, you know, changing the color putting on different keycaps and switches and saying, hey, this is a brand new one. I mean, they do. I mean, Akko always does the uh, world tour ones or like, you know, year of the. But the designs are coming out with uh, from the 65 version of this one to the Santorini, which is the Gen Zero one to what I have coming soon is the YU Zero one. And that I believe it's either all acrylic or all PBT. I'm not sure if it's PC or all acrylic. I think it's acrylic. Um, but they, they're coming out with all these series of keyboards. And I don't know. I just, I love the creativity. I love the selection, the switches. There's a few switches coming out. They just released their first clicky switch, which I'm actually interested in getting in and, and reviewing. Um, but from the rosewood switches that are like loaded up on this one that are nice and deep to the piano switches, which sound like switches that are twice, three times their price, um, to the number of keycap sets that they have and the number of layouts that they have. It just, it just continues to get better. And I can't really, I for one cannot complain. And here we have flex, but it's not, it's not bouncing on a trampoline. It's just enough. But I like how we have this. That's most likely an aluminum plate. And with the walnut wood, it just, I really like it. I, I honestly, it's like, all right, well, I'm going to definitely use it. But after I'm, I use it. I'm going to put it up on the wall, like right above my desk, because it, it's, a, it's a work of art as well. And, you know, they didn't have to go crazy and, you know, put crazy slopes on it or anything. I mean, it's just a nice block of wood with some feet and this aluminum plate. I don't I just, um, when I first got into mechanical keyboards, I was like, oh, just... Just give me black keycaps, white lettering, so white, white on black, simple layouts. That's it. But as I've gotten further and further into it, I mean, from profiles to colorways to just so many different things. Now I, I've even opened myself up to things that I once upon a time would not have liked. But now, not only do I like, I love. So this is just one of those keyboards. I mean, obviously it's going to do the job if you want it you know, to work. It, you're going to use it every day. I just, <laughs> I'm of the opinion to just hang it up and make it a display piece. Um, well, one that I can just grab and start using whenever I'd like. I really, really like it. All right. So yeah, we do have the uh, power switch there. Other than the switch being underneath the caps lock key, which I know a lot of people just don't like. Um, like I said, for me, it's not. I always got at least a few of these. And I mean, it's a lovely keyboard. If you like 
dark wood, walnut wood. Um, I just don't see how you would not enjoy this keyboard. The sound of it is a very deep, earthy tone. I mean, it's just... It's, it's really nice. Um, this one's definitely going on my rotation. It, the only thing now, <laughs> listen to me. Now I, I, I'm going to put it on my desk. Now I'm going to be like, where's the wooden numpad? I don't think I've seen a wooden numpad. And I have to have a buddy of mine that owns a CNC machine uh, make me a numpad case for one of the numpads I already have. And, uh, yeah, that should be interesting. Honestly, it's a, uh, it's just really nice. Now, one thing I know I did forget to check. I wanted to see how thick these keycaps are. So they're one point six millimeters, which is, in my opinion, perfect. They're going to be nice and deep. It's just interesting how the MOA XOA keycap profile has become quite popular as of late. I've already purchased. A handful of sets that I already have in Cherry or SA, but now I've got to have an MOA. Um, waiting on 9009, but it's flat, but it's got that nice little sculpt inside of the keycap, like the top of it scooped out. It's almost like giving light little hugs to your fingertips, but these keycaps are just gorgeous. Like I said, the whole thing is, uh, it's really just bang on for me. The only thing that I think I will end up doing is probably switching out. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love these keycaps, but I love them so much. It's like, I don't want to use them, if that makes sense. I, I, I just, I have a SA keycap set that I think it might, it might not look well on here. But, I mean, I'm going to use it like this for a while, but I just... Uh, I'll definitely come back to this. I want to open it up. I want to see what's inside of there. I want to see if I can make it super deep, like like a thud deep. I mean, obviously not an ugly deep, a nice, still pleasant deep, but a deep. Not the deep from the boys, no, but a deep, as deep as I can. Um, maybe I'll go with both of them since they're different construction, the 65 MU01 and the MU02. Um, I think it'll be interesting. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Akko MU02 Walnut Wooden Keyboard loaded up with the Rosewood switches and the MOA PBT keycams. Hopefully you guys enjoy that and enjoyed the rest of the review. I want to wish everybody out there in YouTube land a wonderful rest of your day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.